Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Aladdin's Dragons. Let's check it out. Okay, so to set up the board game, each player will get their own little player shield according to their color. They're going to get a few tokens labeled one through nine. Uh, and these are tokens they're going to be using to play on the board. They'll play them face down, hidden, when they do. But there's their tokens. Each player will have that. Uh, on the board, you're going to lay out treasures from one of these dragon cards. You would actually just... Uh, flip it over as I did for the first one there and it'll tell you what treasures go into which uh, dungeons there and of course they're not all the same sometimes uh, they'll they'll switch it around different dungeons sometimes dungeons won't even get treasure for that round but each round you're gonna flip over one of these dragon cards and put in those treasures uh, you'll also have your magic lamp or magic cards right there you'll also have the artifacts over there that will be lined up there you'll just pull shuffle them and pull out five of them and put them here in the palace there you have your guard uh, tokens here you'll put one face down there and of course you'll have your uh, first uh, first place camel marker um, usually just stand it up I'm just put it there so you can see it and then you start the game now the game starts where beginning with whoever's the first player they're gonna put one of their tokens face down anywhere on any of these spaces any up in the front the middle or down in the dungeon and so each player they're just gonna go around taking turns putting out uh, tokens for each one of these and then once they put everything out then they're going to decide who gets uh, you know then they're going to say who has the highest number of each one and then they're going to go from there so uh, let me just kind of show you if you see some of these like green put two here well they probably would have put two here in fact in the dungeons and whoever has the highest amount in each dungeon will get the treasure at the topmost tier so if you look at this one greens here they flip it over obviously one they don't get everything they just get the top tier over here we have all three of them here now green put two in so they have a two and a five so they're a seven total red's only a two and yellow's a five so green would get the bounty share of it they get the topmost yellow get this and red would get stuck with nothing and so that's how it's kind of going to go in all of these areas you know first place is going to get the lion's share of whatever the benefit is and then second and third are going to get something or nothing so that's how dungeon tiles move in the treasure uh, arena here the dragon's cave so to speak from there you move up here and resolve this whoever has the most cards here they're going to pick two cards from the magic deck they're going to pick one and then they're going to give the other to another player so for instance uh, red could look at these and these have these are just like little cheats in the game so they'll look at which one they want they'll keep the one they want and give the other one to who was second if there was no one second place then they'll just return it to the bottom of the deck and move on now over here is a space I'll talk about in a minute. This lets you utilize some of your artifacts you've collected. In the first round, no one's going to play there. But after that, everyone's going to want to be playing in that area to get the highest number. Whoever has the highest number here in the merchant area, they can exchange one treasure for any three different treasures. So if they wanted, they could trade them in. That one red I just showed you for three pearls. Ooh, Or they could just mix and match. They could say, you know what? What? I want two black treasures and a gold treasure so they would get that so you can mix it up to any whatever treasures available uh, and there's a whole bag of treasure that comes in the game uh, the, so they can just switch it out one for three and that makes a difference in a minute and I'll tell you why uh, over here whoever gets this gets the first place camel not only do they get the place first but they will break all ties the first player breaks all ties with anyone else so if two people were tied they had a five and a five if red player was first player then they would break the tie also if if there is a tie and neither player is first player then that means the person who's next in line by the first player will break a tie 
Now, after you've resolved all these, you'll go up here, and then you'll go and you'll have to face one of the Sultan's security guards. Now, these tiles are, are labeled there one through nine, and you just put one down there, and it's not revealed until you get there. And let's just say that each one of our people put something down here. So red and yellow put something down, but green didn't put one down. Uh, and, and mind you, they've already put out everything at this point. You know, all the chips would have been, all these little tokens would have been distributed around the board at this point. Point. So we reveal this and it says it is a seven. So that means the tokens they put down have to be a seven or above for them to gain access to the third tier here. Now give it, they've already placed, you know, greens maybe placed a few here, reds placed a few here, yellow has placed some everywhere. So you could have people who've already had stuff put up here, they just need to make sure they can get in. So if we flip these over, uh, we see that red put down an eight, so they're in. Yellow put down a six. Now the guard was a seven, what does that mean? Well, yellow hopefully has gathered some treasure and they can give that treasure for one extra point and make that six a seven. Now green, green didn't put anyone here, but yet they're in the palace, what does that mean? Well, green tried to risk it and say, oh, how much treasure do I have to pay? Well, here they have to pay this guy seven treasure to get in, so it became very expensive to get in. Treasure is how you're going to buy the artifacts here. So you don't want to give as much to the Sultan's bodyguard there, but but since Green didn't have a token to put down, he's got to pay the full price, or if he doesn't, then all of his tokens are just removed. They don't count in the, ga in the, in the third and final round. So anyway, when you get to the third and final round, the bidding begins, of course. You flip over all the tokens and see who won. The person with the highest uh, will get to get that token. Now, if there is, for instance, you see yellow has an eight and green has a one here. Yellow one, what does that mean? They need to give eight of the same type of treasure. You can't mix and max, uh, match all your treasures here and say, okay, here, I'll give them about eight. I'll just give them a mix of everything. By the way, there are big treasures in the game and small treasures. Let me show you an example here of a big and a small treasure. This one's worth three. This one's worth one. But they have to be all of the same color for you to give to get that artifact. You have to have that. Um, if you don't have it, then you can't get it. Now, what if a player had one and let's say yellow, instead of just playing that eight, they'd play two here. They played a two and a, and a four. Well, what that would mean is they would have to pay four of one type of treasure and two of another type of treasure. So they could break it up that way if they had two tokens in that area. Anyway, you resolve that for each one of these and the winner would take that artifact and put it behind their player shield. Now, what do each one of these artifacts do? Because over here I told you, the person with the highest number of, of points here, they get to utilize two of these artifacts and second place would get to utilize one for that round. And on the back of everyone's player shield, it tells you conveniently what each one of these artifacts do. The lamp lets you play as many spell cards as you want. So all these little spell cards you were getting earlier, you may play as many as you want. Uh, this one, this emblem here, makes you double a, a token. So for example, let's say that uh, yellow had their token in here and it looked like they weren't going to win because green got seven and, and red and yellow tied at four. They could actually play their double card and double that four into an eight and then they would beat out green. Uh, what this one does, the flying carpet, you can put this on the board. It counts as a three. So again, <laughs> if yellow wanted to beat green, they're at a four, green's at a seven, they could play this token, they could be at a seven two, and if they're closest to the first player or they are first player, then they would beat ties and they would beat out seven. All right, so that's what that one does. This one cancels a spell card. So whoever has Aladdin's lamp is gonna be pretty powerful if they get to utilize it. And if that's the case, you may wanna counter those spells and utilize one of your artifacts to cancel one of their cards because there are some way all awful cards there they can play you can play on opponents here so that's a good one the key allows you to enter the palace by bypassing the guard so you don't even have to pay the guard you can just if you won here or got first or second place you can just play your key and you're automatically get in without having to pay any treasure or put any tokens it kind of saves you from putting tokens there and then the last one's a scroll this breaks a tie among final scoring because you see the game ends when all the artifacts are taken once the last artifacts taken 
mistake and you add them up all up. Anyone who has a tying score, then you go through their list and then they see how many scrolls they have. And whoever has the most scrolls wins. And if there's a tie for scrolls, then both players or all players will share in the victory. And that is Aladdin's Dragons. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Wow. Um, I love this game. This was the best game I played at BGG SpringCon this past year. Uh, it was super fun. It really shocked me a little bit. All this blind bidding, you don't know where to go, what's more important to someone else. You, you kind of second guess yourself as you see more people placing tokens on the board. Ah, you know, it's kind of hard uh, to figure out where to go and where to put your token. I love that there's three different levels and how they kind of balance each other out. You need treasure to work your magic in the market, but the market kind of works for both both treasure and you know the palace areas where the big artifacts are and that's where the game ending scoring is but you need treasure enough treasure to pay for those artifacts so it really does balance itself out now I'd heard a lot about this game in the past but I'd never given it much thought because of this this cover looks awful the board doesn't look as nice now I kind of love it all but uh, yeah so I was like I don't know about that it looks kind of cheap but we ran out of games on my list to play and I remembered this from a long time ago so well let me check it out everyone keeps talking about it Wow 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 it just I, I love it when a game surprises me and that's what Aladdin's Dragons did. It really surprised me. Very simple, straightforward game uh, to figure out, to teach to people. D dang, this could even be a gateway game too. Now this is an older game, obviously. I think this came out in 2000. Uh, and it is kind of hard to get. In fact, most times I see it overseas in the UK. I don't see many copies floating around the US. Even though my copy did come from the US, uh, thankfully I was able to find one. So I dropped it down on the shipping a lot because of that. But yeah, should you get this game? If you can find it for a decent deal yes it's worth your time such a great game all right gamers that's all the time I have for now until next time you get three wishes